Hi, Itai. Thanks for joining me to talk about your final remaining days here in New York. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So first off, it's been, I guess, about nearly four years. So why are you leaving and what's next for you? So um, I'm a diplomat and a diplomat uh, has a term limit. Uh, we usually go for a um, posting of three to five years. And right now I'm ending my uh, fourth year. Uh, so as we do, it's a natural thing. Uh, I'm going back to HQ uh, to do uh, some desk job uh, for a couple of years and then uh, for my next destination. Ah, all right. Now, beforehand, you were in Chicago, right? You were the deputy consul in Chicago. Um, how does New York compare to Chicago? You know, I know that Chicagoans like this expression, this uh, term second city. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I always look at, looked at it as a literally a frustrating thing. I always felt like I'm not in the city, like where things are actually happening. I always yeah. had a FOMO uh, in Chicago about New York. And Chicago is lovely, don't get me wrong. Um, great people, great neighborhoods, clean, uh, good food. Um, but I'm the kind of person that wants to be where things are actually starting and happening. And, you know, uh, I think it was uh, John Lennon who once said that if I was uh, living in Roman times, I would want to live in Rome. Yes. <laughs> uh, New York is the Rome of our time. So I feel the same, especially in what I'm dealing with, which is media and, uh, and uh, news and Israel. Um, New York is uh, by far the most interesting place in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's been nearly four years that you've been here. And, you know, obviously you never would have guessed that your last 10 months in this, you know, in this posting would have been like this, obviously. I mean, no one would have imagined it. So what's it been like for you? Because, I mean, representing Israel in general is likely no easy task for anyone in any city or any country in general, right? So what has, how has it just been for you? You know, can you just speak to that first in a little bit of a general sense over the last 10 months since October 7th, um, Hamas terror attacks? So October 7th caught us all in surprise. Uh, the military, the people at the border, but also us diplomats. Um, we were on vacation. I was in Europe. Uh, my whole team was uh, on uh, Simchat Torah and uh, and I found myself on uh, on Saturday, right after the attack, to, to taking the first plane to New York, opening the consulate on Saturday evening. And on Sunday, it already looked like we are, you know, those days that look like a week. Yeah. It looked like a week. I must tell you that one of the things that I do remember very well is that that Sunday, the day after October 7, we already had an anti-Israel protest outside the consulate which was a sign, a sign of what's coming and a sign that many of those people who are protesting are not protesting anything that goes on in Gaza. It was on October 7, no casualties in Gaza. Um, they were celebrating. They were celebrating the achievement that brought them closer to what they really want, which is to eliminate Israel. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, ever since then, um, it's been a, a madhouse. Um, at the beginning, uh, we were overwhelmed with, uh, with, with the attention and support and uh, that we got here in New York, in this great city. You know, people uh, almost forgot that this is uh, the biggest uh, Jewish uh, city in the world, but October 7 reminded us that very well. Um, we were flooded with, uh, with packages that people sent. Um, we had to uh, uh, charter planes to take uh, people who wanted to go to Israel, who wanted to assist or who wanted to uh, uh, enlist into the army or to or reservist. And we were overwhelmed with, with local politicians that, um, that came uh, to the consulate and offered their condolences and... and, and so the past few months, um, I almost did not have a single week without attending three, four pro-Israel events, and, and not just by the Jewish community, by a lot of different communities. 
Um, but as for the core of what I do, which is media, I can tell you that it's been a very um, gradual uh, procedure process. Mm -hmm. If we had in the first two months an unwavering support across the uh, everywhere, okay, yeah. um, I would go on interviews on uh, on MSNBC, okay, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even have to say anything because. The person interviewing me were already saying all of the things about happening in, in what Hamas did and everything. So it was um it was um it was very different than what we used. Yes. But um time went on and then the war in Gaza and proceeded and, and and people went back to their uh, stances before the war and much worse than that. Uh, because uh, what we saw on the first day of the war, those people protesting outside the concert, uh, that uh, started to uh, um, go viral, like a viral, really yes. like this, um, mainly among young people. And that's, um, that's a very uh, worrying trend that we are dealing with, because we're living in two separate worlds. In one world, you have the people who knows what's going on. They, they watch the the news. They read the the, the newspapers. They they know Israelis. They, they heard about Israel before. And then you have those young people that all they know is is things that they interpretate in their world uh, terminology. Put it in, in things that they promote, like social justice and 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 uh, intersectionality and things like that. And, and yes. Yeah. Whatever happens there, it's like the same thing in Black Lives Matter. So it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Now we're you know we're ten months we're almost you know ten months there. Today's actually that we're doing this interview. It's August seventh, right? So we're um, several months. Obviously, you know the anniversary, and there's still hostages in Gaza. Um, and obviously, you know, the war is still going on. What are sort of your hopes? Obviously, you don't have a crystal ball. You know what I mean? And there's lots, there was multiple players and influences and all, you know, involved here. Um, is there, you know, do you have an, do you, what would you say, do you think, you know, where do you see us going with the hostages, say, for example? And I know it's tough because you just don't know. Yes. So right now, uh, we still have 115 hostages there. Um, we don't know how many exactly are alive, but we yes. do know for sure that many are not alive. Yes. Uh, we still uh, see them as hostages. We want them back, and even if they're not alive. But there are many that are alive. And, yes. um, and we are doing our best to, to bring them home because uh, every day that goes on and they're not back home, it's another day they can lose their life. Mm -hmm. uh, not uh it's 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 not a vacation you know they're being yes. treated uh, horribly they're being kept in, in tunnels with no air and they don't see the day of light and they're being uh, abused um so obviously there's a lot of uh stress to do it pressure to do it as soon as possible um but we're dealing with a terrorist organization we're dealing with uh with um with a group that uh that use any leverage they have uh, to to play psychological uh, warfare on the families and on the Israelis and on the hostages themselves. But they have a different goal. You know, our objective is to uh, eliminate Hamas and bring back our people. Mm -hmm. Their objective is to eliminate Israel and, uh, and uh, at the very least uh, to survive as an organization mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in Gaza. Um, so we're trying to find uh, the middle way. We're trying to find a place that, uh, not the middle way between eliminating Israel, but the middle way about like something that that would allow them to, uh, the terrorists, in their view, to grieve a little bit. Um, huh? You know, they're, 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 it's not just the terrorists, it's the people of Gaza who are also uh, being stressed. Um, but also will not uh, close uh, the chapter on our goal to mm -hmm. eventually uh, leave the Gaza Strip without Hamas in a way that they cannot 
pose a threat like October 7 again. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing it by uh, the United States uh, being a great ally of us and, and in Qatar. Uh, but I can't tell you exactly when it will happen. I can tell you that yeah. it's very close. There are not a lot of uh, disagreements right now. It's, it's on, mainly on things like uh, whether um, the Philadelphia Corridor, which is the border between Gaza and Egypt, yes. will be held by Israel or by the Palestinians. We believe that it has to be remain um, with Israel because that's where most of the weapons that are in Gaza came through. They came through underneath this border, so we believe that it's crucial for us to hold control of it and other small issues. Okay. Let me ask you, I just to pivot back quickly. So were you surprised, you know, were you surprised? Are you surprised that, you know, we st there's still hostages in Israel? New York City has the largest Jewish population. New York's greater New York City area has a greater Jewish population outside Israel. That there were still not only anti-Israel sentiments, anti-Israel demonstrations, encampments, vandalism, and postering, but specifically anti-Jewish acts of this nature. I mean, we were seeing directly anti-Jewish acts, vandalism, hate crimes. Um, that wasn't even, you know, a lot of it wasn't even necessarily anti-Israel, specifically targeting Jewish people. Um, what was kind of your reaction to that? First of all, we have to put uh, the thing thing out of the table, uh, when they saying Zionist, they mean Jews. They do, yeah. I, I've seen uh, a video of uh, the Venezuelan uh, President Maduro a few days ago talking about the protest uh, against him, this dictator, and he's saying that this is caused by the international Zionism who control the media mm -hmm. and, uh, and control the banks and are uh, paying these people to uh, to demonstrate against the will of the people. I don't know what, you know, of course, I mean, Jews, and of course, all of yeah. them mean Jews. I mean, uh, and I think sometimes we were seeing these dog whistles where... It, it, it's masked under anti-Israel or anti-Zionist. And then underneath, it's like, okay, it's anti-Jewish. But I think what we've you know seen in New York is that there hasn't even been, in many cases, dog whistles. Do you know what I mean? It's just blatantly been Jews this. I've seen, you know, Jews that. And I think that's what's even more shocking, that there's no attempt to mask it, at least. Do you know what I mean? And I understand yes. what you're saying. That's yes. I think, it's very surprising. It's very yeah. surprising that young people who uh, see themselves as progressive and, and social justice uh, activists, uh, that they embrace uh, the oldest uh, hate in, the, in history. Yeah. Do you and think that, sorry, do you think that New York City lawmakers have done enough, including the mayor, just to combat this? I mean, it's going on, like you said, from, a, you know, within a day of October 7th, you know, I covered um, a protest, you know, akin to what you're talking about in Times Square. And in retrospect, right, it's like what you're saying, what were people protesting? Because the war, so to speak, hadn't even begun. You know what I mean? Just October, you know, October 7th had, but Israel, there was no, um, you know, troops in Gaza to that degree. Um, so, you know, do you, the, the city and the city's lawmakers have had several months to witness this, right? Um, and we've seen it. It obviously died down a little bit since school is out, truthfully, when we're talking about encampments. But there's still hate crimes. There's still anti-Semitic um, postering. Do you think really the lawmakers and the police officials are doing enough? No, uh, in America, you've got uh, free speech and uh, it's... Uh constitutional and um you know between the balance of uh, the right of people to say the worst of the yeah. worst things even if it's uh even if it's uh supporting nazis um they're allowed to say it yeah uh, but when it comes to actually posing uh, a violent threat on, on on jews and that that happened you know like we've seen numerous attacks we've seen the uh, houses of uh director of the Jewish Museum being vandalized. Uh, and we've seen people uh, in, uh, in the subway being uh, uh, molested and, 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 and in, my, in, in the public area. Um, so I think there, there is, uh, there, is, there is certainly 
place for more enforcement. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that we have great uh, relations with the city leadership and I'm not doubting even for a second the commitment of Mayor Adams to fighting anti-Semitism. He says it in every opportunity and I don't think mm -hmm. it's just words. Um, this is this is a phenomenon that's not just New York. Mm -hmm. Across the US, it's across the world. Um, to me, it's more of a... Um, it's more of a sign of a warning sign of what could uh, come next. When you have such a, such large movements of people who are bluntly anti-Semitic, and you know they can they can sugarcoat it however they want, saying yes. that this is a, and and yes, there are there is a, there is there are a lot of people who go to protest because they really believe that the war should stop and they care about the people in Gaza. It's yeah. a legitimate thing and there are many of those, okay? Uh, but in every protest, you always see those uh, signs that leave no place for uh, confusion. Bluntly anti-Semitic. Um, for me, that's very worrying. This is a trend in the world. Um, it's. Uh, I think that it's not just about Israel. I think it's Israel is right now on the on the on the center of it, but okay. eventually, it's an anti-Western culture mm -hmm. sentiment. Um, it wouldn't be Israel; it would be something else. And you see that always in those protests, they always burn the American flags next to the Israel flag. Yeah, they always defecate um, American stat historic uh, symbols and statues. Mm -hmm. They do it all over the world. And I think that's um, a sign of the Western world failure mm -hmm. to educate uh, young people from values, uh, the values that we are, that we need to, we take it for granted sometimes, our mm -hmm. freedom. Hey, let me ask you, um, one of the residual effects, so to speak, of October 7th was that the consulate here in New York scaled back um, its participation in New York Pride, right, in June. Is that one, uh, is that, was that one sort of, a, I mean, you say like a side effect that um, you found unfortunate and that you didn't really want to do, but that needed to be done since the Israeli consulate has been such um, a player involved in past New York City Pride marches? So, um, Israel has been uh, the first foreign mission in New York, and actually in the, the Israeli concert in New York was the first foreign mission in the world yeah. to participate in a, in a gay parade. It was in 2007, 2005, I don't remember exactly, but was the first. Mm -hmm. We've done it ever since, every year. This year, um, we decided to scale down. It's not that we didn't participate. We had a float. We just didn't have um, a, a consulate staff uh, following the float. And the reason is, is not uh, because we were not allowed. The reason is because uh, we decided that, uh, first of all, it's not time for celebration. Also, the gay parade in, in Tel Aviv was uh, canceled this year. Mm -hmm. Second, um, it's 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 too much of a threat for uh, for us to want to take this uh, chance on our people and and for honestly for security our security to handle. Mm -hmm. And third, we um we knew, fortunately, that we will immediately be uh, um the only thing the only photos and and things that will come out of it is people. Uh, uh, protesting it and, and, and yes. ugly things that we've seen in other places. So we thought it's the we, we thought it's uh, the best uh, decision to scale it down. It's not that we are not part of it. Yes, yeah. doesn't mean that we are not committed to the LGBT community, which we not don't support because we are trying to uh, uh, win their support. We are doing it way before it was popular. Mm -hmm. We think it uh, when we paid prices with a lot of others who do not share these uh, values. Exactly. And I feel that's known. I mean, I definitely think it's perceived that there definitely were the security issues because 
within, and that's probably a whole separate, you know, discussion now within the LGBT community, there's all these other voices now that have emerged, you know, with this queers for Palestine and stuff like that. So I think there definitely is a perception that it was definitely more of a security and that these protesters um, would take something away. Um, let me ask, do you feel you have any sort of unfinished business? So when is your last day here in New York? I'm finishing exactly two weeks from today. Okay. So P um, minus two weeks. Do you feel you have any unfinished business? Is there anything you want to do? Anything you want to meet? Anyone you want to meet? Um, any sort of, yeah, like anything like that. Um, or you've done a pretty good job of wrapping it all I've up. I've done a pretty good <laughs> job, but there's always things to do. You know, I never took the, the um, what is it called? This chairlift to Roosevelt Island. Yes, the tram, the Roosevelt the Island tram. tram. I've never done that. I need to do that before I leave. I okay, always, that's good. That seems fun. Never done that. Um, never managed to uh, get a reservation to Don Engi, although I tried many times. Wait, to where? To uh, an Italian restaurant, Don Engi, that I tried. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Never managed to score a table okay. there. Yes. Um it's on my resi it's on my resi notify still, but yes, okay. Um didn't see uh, uh didn't see the football game. Okay. Um uh, but uh, overall I did most of the things. You did it, right? And then let and then looking back, do you is there one favorite moment that you have that you were here? If whether it was just um, through your line of work, was it meeting someone, um, whether it was, you know, a world leader, a, a, an actor, or was it just um, an overall meeting, um, you know, families of hostages? I mean, anything, you know, what was just something that sticks with you um, that you'll always take with you? And I'm sure there's, you know, more than one, but. So I think my biggest pride here is the team that I gathered around mm -hmm. me. That is a great team. And um and I recruited each of every one of them. And I feel like I created here a very strong um group that represents Israel in the best way and they will continue to do it after I leave. So that's my legacy. Um as for a moment um you know it's sad to say, but after October 7, um, I think the, um, the rally in Times Square right after October 7, that was very powerful. I saw dozens of thousands of New Yorkers coming to support Israel. That was a display of, of, of love and support and solidarity. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the major uh, New York leaders were there, including the U.S. senators. So that was... Um, that was the moment that I felt that uh, I'm privileged to be in this city and not in any other city in the world. Exactly. And then just to ask you, going back to when you first started the role, so about four years ago, right? What was your goal or objective then? I mean, clearly it was a completely different um, landscape and environment, obviously, right? Um, and I will ask you, just to prep you for the next question, what's your kind of advice for the next spokesperson, right? But when you first started, what was your, you know, you came to New York, it was a completely different, you know, what was, you know, what was your goal then? It's funny because um, I kept in New York in the midst of COVID. And for, for a year, I didn't see anyone. I didn't yeah. miss anyone. Um, but my uh, plan before I left Israel was that I'm going to, I'm going to make Israel um, a progressive cause again. It's progressive. Because I yeah. felt that, uh, that we had a huge challenge with progressive. And we still do. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, but I found out um, after a few months that the other groups here, that I, they were not on my radar at all. Um, that are very interesting. Not, they're not necessarily uh, connected with Israel, but very like-minded. Yes. Much more supportive. Um, groups, like which uh, groups? Like groups that um, that um, that are just liberals, liberals from the left and from the right, mm -hmm. 
that feel like American politics took a, a turn to the extremes on both sides. Yes. And they're gathering together on causes like free speech and mm -hmm. liberal values. Uh, they could be people from the right wing or for the left wing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the height of, uh, when I arrived here, it was the height of, of, of all of this uh, coming out of the cancel culture. Yeah, so there was a lot of groups of that they were against cancel culture, on that sense of word, and I found that there's a lot of common language with them. Yes, and because myself and the country that I represent is a country that believes in liberal values, mm -hmm. and being uh, sort of cornered by the same groups. Um, so I found common language with them and I created the great coalition and the great partnership with a lot of them. I don't want to name names, but but, yeah. but, it, but I found out that this is a this is a this is an emerging group in American public opinion that uh, mm -hmm. that I want to engage with. And I think that was it's, it's, it was a good choice. Do you feel that you're leaving um, New York and specifically the United States? Um, at a time you maybe would want to stay till November at least to see what happens with the election, um, or you're you you've had enough of uh, you know large geopolitical um, issues right now. I think we all experienced enough politics in the last yeah. uh, few months than we will ever need in our lifetime. Yes. Um, so while I'm uh, I am eager to see what would happen. Um, I guess I'll just watch it from TV yes. and I'll be able to uh, sort of like commentate and explain to everyone what that means and what, uh, you know, like uh, probably going to be the best. Uh, I'm probably going to be very popular on uh, November 5th on yeah. the <laughs> night. November 5th or 3rd? I don't remember. But yes, yeah. November 4th. Yes, I'm looking at my calendar. Yes, November 5th. November 5th. Tuesday, yeah. November 5th, right? Yeah, I'll probably very, I'll be uh, very popular that night. Um, but yeah, I love America. I feel like it's, it's, it's a home for me. It's a home for my wife. My wife wants to stay here forever. She's yeah. not in Italy. She's Lithuanian. Um, and, uh, and that's not, um, that's not the end. It's just, I'm sure that we will come back. Yes. No, no, no. That's interesting. And then have you had more sleepless nights in the last several months than you did before? Or how's it been for you? I never have good sleep. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll always find something. So. Right? There's <laughs> the first always line. something, right? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. always something in, in your line of work. No, no, no. I'm sure, right? Um, and let me ask you a final question. So what advice do you have for your next um for you know for the next spokesperson, sort of occupationally? And if there's any pearls of wisdom, assuming they're not, you know, assuming they're coming from somewhere else, um, what you know, advice you give them on just navigating New York City. So occupational advice about being the spokesperson for the Consul um, of Israel and the then just one. navigating New York, being a new New Yorker. Well, I think I have one um, one, one uh, advice that covers both. Yes. Be out there as much as possible. Never say no to any invitation, to any event, no matter who is it, who is behind it, what's, what's the... Every time, every second that you're outside in the city is much more valuable than when you're um, behind this desk. Mm -hmm. um, you never know who you will meet in New York. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that I like the most about the city. You can go and speak with somebody and he happens to be world leader in, you know, in, in whatever he does. Okay. You have a, even the homelesses here are the best homelesses in the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, like everyone here is is a professional and hard worker and an interesting person. Um, so you know, the more people you will meet, the more uh, you, whoever, not just a spokesperson, you will be able to do more of your work. Yeah. Okay, that's a good advice. And then I have one more, which is advice for the next person, but. Then personal advice, I probably will admit. Can you suggest the best place for a falafel in New York City? But I don't know if you can choose favorites because you're going to have to pick a favorite. Yes. Okay. So my favorite. Yes. I was, um, I used to have a falafel right down from my building, which was heaven. Okay. Yeah. But then they closed it and um, they now have only one branch, but it's the best. 
It's called uh, falafel tamam. Ah, okay. I saw that on your Instagram. Okay, it's good. I have to try it. Very good. It's in Lexington and 70, I want to say. Yeah, it's up there. I saw that. Okay. I will, because I haven't found a good, I was actually in Toronto um, last week and one of the best falafels I've ever had is at a place in Toronto called Togli. <laughs> And another uh, very good Israeli restaurant that I love, it's called uh, 19 Cleveland. Of course, yes, yes, I've been yes. there, yes. So that's very good. They yes, have, that's good. That's the best, the best hummus in town, I think. Okay, I am going to check out the falafel place for sure. And I've been to 19 Cleveland and across from the 1010 Wins office, uh, we're across the street from Port Said. I don't know if you've ever been there. Oh, it's also excellent. So that's fun. That's a very fun vibe there. It's very lively and yes. DJs and stuff. Israelis know how to have a good time when they need to. <laughs> so it's a very fun time there. Okay, Itai, it has been really great speaking with you. It's been great working with you. And all the best wishes on the next chapter back in Israel. And I hope New York has uh, treated you well. Yes, certainly does. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Itai. All okay. right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.